I've been getting some feedback lately that, that sometimes people are a little bit nervous about what I'm going to say next. <laughs> and so you can imagine with, with all of the controversy going around about who's going to kneel and who's not going to kneel, when they read Philippians this morning and said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, somebody might have been a little worried about what I was going to say. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm not preaching about Philippians this morning. There's plenty of other good things to preach about in the gospel of Jesus Christ this morning. So we have this parable that Jesus tells when he's talking to the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests there in the temple. But sometimes I like to update these parables just a little bit. So not everyone here has probably worked in a vineyard or knows anything to do with that. But I'm going to tell you a story about a man who needed to move. And he needed help moving from one apartment to another place. If any of you have ever helped someone move, you know where this story is going. He had two friends. And the first friend said, sure, I'll be there at 9 o'clock in the morning to help you move. And the second friend said, no, I'm sorry, that's not going to work for me. I can't help you move. And at 9 o'clock that next morning, the friend who said he was going to be there wasn't there at all. Never showed up. But the friend who said, I can't be there, did show up and helped move all day long. Now, for those of you who have ever moved house, you tell me which one did the will of the Father in that story. <laughs> We all know that our words mean less than our actions. That what we do is how people know who we are. I mean, we say a lot of words. People say all kinds of things all the time. But how we really know them is by when they show up and do something, even if they said they couldn't in the first place. Now, this parable comes out of a discussion that Jesus is having with the priests and the Pharisees, and it's a discussion that, that I feel um, very sympathetic towards the priests. They start asking Jesus questions, and Jesus starts turning questions back on them. And he says, you know, I'll tell you by what authority I'm doing all these things if you can tell me this about John the Baptist. And so they all get together, and they start talking amongst themselves, and they start arguing with each other. That's fine. But they're not arguing about the answer to the question necessarily. What they're arguing about is who they're going to make angry with their answer. Right? They're not even actually worried about the actual thing that they believe. Jesus says, was John's authority from heaven or not? And they say, well, if we say this, that's really going to upset this group of people. And if we say that, it's really going to upset the crowds and they're going to come after us. So we're just going to act like we don't have an opinion at all. And we're going to say, I don't know. That's fine. Jesus says, all right, I'm not going to answer your question either. But notice that the answer that the Pharisees and the priests were trying to come up with was not about what they believed. It wasn't about their faith or what they understood in their theology. It was their fear of who they were going to upset if they took a stand one way or the other. That's what they were worried about. And that is what so many of us worry about in this world these days. We worry that if we say, I believe this, because it's what we really believe, because we've prayed about it, because we've thought about it, because we've considered it, but if we say it, somebody's going to get upset. I promise you, I feel so much sympathy for these priests this morning. As someone who can sometimes have a loud mouth and who will and is not often that afraid to say something that might upset people, I understand what it feels like, though, 
to sit and to worry about who's going to get upset about that thing that you said or didn't say, even if it is what you truly believe. We all want to follow Jesus. We all want to follow where God is. The problem is, is that more often than not, we think we know the way, and we think we can do it without God. We think that we'll just make all the decisions, and rarely do we ever think, how am I following God? How am I following my Savior in this particular place? Did I sit down and read scripture and pray about the decision I made? Did I sit down and consider by reading through, through all of the, the texts of the Psalms how they might spiritually touch me, that I might be led to make a decision to follow God in one way or the other? How often did we pray, either silently either alone or with our friends or in corporate worship so that we would know where God might be leading us because it's not that we don't want to follow God. It's that we don't take the time to think about what God wants us to do and where God is actually leading us. Because I can tell you, if you take that time, it doesn't make all the fear go away. You still worry, who's going to get upset about this decision or that decision? But what it does inside of you is it helps center you in God. So that when somebody comes and says to you, that really upset me when you said that thing, you don't have to worry that you didn't do your work ahead of time and get anxious and think, well, I, maybe, I, maybe I don't really believe that. Now, don't get me wrong. Feedback is wonderful. It's a great thing to have. We need to be listening to our community of friends and family, our community of our church. But we don't need to be making every decision about where we stand on any particular thing out of fear about what the crowds might say. We need to be looking for God's will in our life, looking in our hearts, looking in our souls, and asking ourselves, do I really believe that God loves me? Do I really believe in God's mercy and care and kindness? Do I really believe in God's peace? Because when we say those things, when we recite what we believe, it's not that all the fear goes away. It's that we know that God is with us wherever we go. Sometimes God and Jesus are behind us, pushing us. Sometimes they're dragging us along in front of us. But they are always with us. So as we ask ourselves hard questions, as we have difficult conversations, with our family, and with our friends about things that we believe, our values, our faith, our understanding of who God is. Take heart. Say your prayers. Follow God and let God lead you. The wonderful thing about being a Christian is that we are not alone in being Christian. There is no way that any Christian ever could have made it by themselves. We need God, we need our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we need one another. This is who we are. This is our family of faith. And everyone is needed to be part of that family. So let us go forth. Let us take that love. Let us take that hope and let us go forth into the world sharing who we are and what we believe. Amen. Amen.